So yesterday we did arithmetic pieces. So that's the list of numbers. You were finding the, the value of the x term, and you're finding what the 20th term the value of that was. So if we go back to our arithmetic sequence from yesterday, tonight is series. And series is means you're going to sum a certain number of terms. So these formulas won't tell you, so a sequence formula will tell you what the value of the 20th term is, and a series formula will sum all 20 terms. Okay, so sum as together, right? So anything that's a series is a sum. Anything that's a sequence is going to find the value of that particular term. So yes, we're both numbers, but yes, we're both numbers. So it's a sum of a sequence, and it's for a certain amount of time. Uh, okay, so there's two options for this one. Option numero uno uh, is SN I don't think you're going to use this quadratic formula all the time. Yes? Not so much. So that's the first one. So what I would use this one for, sometimes you'll also see it written as a sigma. You see it written as a sigma, so the Greek letter sigma represents sum in math. So some of you are going to take a stats course, you're going to take a stats lesson with us next year, or you're going to take most degrees require you to take one math course. Um, whether it be nursing, whether it be a uh, social worker, you end up having to take one math course. And there's all different kinds. Stats tend to be the one that people kind of gravitate towards because it's not as massive as calculus. I think you guys would find it either. Um, but stats does a lot of some stuff. Maybe you use the Greek letter sigma for that. So sometimes we'll see it with a sigma. That meant it's uh, okay, so option two. So this one is option one. I need to know how many terms I'm coming. Uh, I need to know what the first term is. And I need to know the common difference. Okay? So the easier one, the easier one to do is if you have. is if you have the first term and the last term. This is actually, do you guys recognize part of this? Like, that term, <coughs> we can use the two. That's yesterday, so I can get two T in. Okay? You guys with this okay? So these are just the exact same thing. They're just formulas manipulated to be easier if you have those two T's of your equation. Um, so we just went through this. So n is the number of terms. Uh, T1 is the value of the first term. That's the new term here. And the D is the common difference. This. So this one is n is the same thing, number of terms. Uh, T1 is the value of the first term. And Tn is the value of your last term. So nothing terribly difficult or weird or just more formula work. And you're talking about manipulating yesterday's formula to equal n and things like that.
can rearrange you guys are really good at out the developer. So I anticipate that you guys can provide a policy for this stuff. Okay. Oh, good example. Okay, male fireflies flap in a particular pattern to send warning signals or signal locations. If a male firefly flashes twice in the first minute, four times in the second minute, six times in the third minute. So my sometimes when it's putting two words, I'm going to radio so I can see the sequence. I flash with the sequences, so you guys would agree with me. And it's arithmetic because we're adding two at a time, right? We're not doubling it because it's just six. If I only gave you the two and the four, you could you could do geo or arithmetic, but because I gave you the six, I'm not doubling it. The four was double for me. Right? Okay. And geo, we haven't done that yet. So how many times does the firefly flash in the 30th minute? Okay. So we are looking for the 30th minute. So this is a sequence question. This is maybe after three days. Because it's asking what's happening in the 30th minute. It's not asking anything about what's happening over the entire 30 minutes, what's happening in the 30th minute. Okay, I don't know if a firefly would flop the 30th minutes. I don't know, that seems like a lot of aggressive flashing. I'm not sure. Okay, but the difference here is, is that they both have 30 and both A and B, but they have more smaller margin. So this is yesterday's, so part A, I'm going to use T30, because I'm finding the 30th minute, is equal to T0, T1. What's the value of T1? T2 plus 30 minus 1, What's my common difference? Two, because I'm adding two. There's a positive two. So two plus nine over two. Fifty-eight plus sixty. So in the thirtieth minute, that poor firefly has to flash once every second. I feel like a firefly is not going to flash continually for 30 minutes. I feel like that would use up a lot of energy for a little bus. These are things that math questions do that biology probably is saying, why would you ever calculate that? Although we did do, we did do, uh, we did a half we did a logarithm question in bio the other day, and through correct mathematics, we proved the uh, bio answer was wrong. There you go. There's the fun stuff. Um, so now the question is, is what would be the total number of flashes in 30 minutes? So the 30th minute and within the 30 minutes. So this is a series question. So this is asking for the sum. How many times in 30 minutes do the fireflies actually flash? Uh, so we're going to use the sum formula. Now, do you want to use option one or option two? Option two is a lot easier. We know the first one and we know the last one. We just calculated it. So why not use the easier one? So I'm going to use um, sum of 30 minutes is equal to 30, by the way, 2, 2 plus 60. So I feel like that that's a lot of flashes for a little tiny bunch to do in 30 minutes. That's a lot of energy to use up. But that's what the question is. Only do so I calculated it. So the bug flashed 930 times over a period of 30 minutes. In 30th minute, the poor thing was just flickering like crazy. Um, one over the second. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. If you use the first one, you get the exact same answer. You just wouldn't use the sixth minute. Mm. I do really like these questions. 
says is this stuff. I don't know. This is basic fundamental stuff, right? You guys can, I call these plug in plays. Like you plug them in, plug them in and you can just do the math and it works better. These ones take a little bit more thinking. And stuff like this shows up on your exam. And stuff like this is going to show up on curricular exams in grade 12, where you have to think that a little bit further. So the sum. Okay. So the sum of the first two terms in a arithmetic series is 13. Okay. Okay. Is it bothering you? I don't think it's that one. I think it's like further down. Yeah. Right, you guys agree with me? That's the first sentence. Term one plus term two, the sum of them is equal to 13. And I just don't know what they are. So I don't think blank. X and Y if you wanted to, but they should be two different numbers because in arithmetic sequence, you're adding something to the number, so it wouldn't be X and X, they could never be the same, right? Okay, so the sum of the first four terms one, two, three. Forty-six. Determine the first six terms in the series and the sum of those six terms. All right. We have all the knowledge that we need. I think. Um, how are we? How are we going to practice? Okay. So you're saying put 13 here. Okay. Okay. All right. So when that teacher says I need to say 13, because these two things have a sum of 13 plus T3 plus T4 equals 46. Okay, so subtract 13 from both sides. So T3, I'm losing the lines, guys, sorry. Uh, 33. Okay. So we know that this is 33, and we know this is 13. So now what? You can make a difference for me. But here the pressure also is good because the difference of the difference of the three and two four to be the same. Okay, yeah. So he's saying the common difference should be the same. So you're going to guess and check kind of method. What works, what doesn't work. Um, the only problem I have with the and check method is that sometimes they give you a limited half of the corner of my hand. Uh, they give you a limited scope. Like we're probably going to go with guess and check, we're going to go with whole number. Right? Because I don't want to get into decimals. I don't want to get into fractions. Because that's going to be ugly. So I will tell you that the answers for these are um, How many here would have gone to guess and check? And that's okay. That's a, a good strategy. You're going to get marks for it. There's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes you do what you need to do. Yeah. Ted, what do you think? Okay. So, sorry, say that again. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think this is where I would go. I put the joke into my formulas just because that's where I'm more comfortable. Um, I'm not comfortable anywhere. I just want to pretend. Why does it feel like the math? Um, so I obviously am not going to use 
the second formula because I don't know what the last term is. I'm going to go to that first term. So I'm going to do a system. We did chapter 8, which we haven't learned yet, but you guys have done the system a million times. So my first equation of my system is going to be uh, 13 is equal to n over 2 times 2 times c1 sorry uh, plus n minus 1 times d oh what can i replace n and 2 you guys from here right so that's for that first sentence of information um so n should be because I have two terms in that first thing that I'm going to So I'm going to have 13 is equal to 2 C1 plus D. Okay, I'm confused. Like I can't move up on this line. That helps? I'll go to the line before it. So I replace my N's with 2, right? So that gives me a fraction of 1, 1 times N to the cell. This gives me one, one times D and two. Okay. I don't even know if I need to teach this chapter eight because we've done so many systems at this point that it's kind of fun. Hey, equation two. Now I can't solve this because it has two variables. It has a T1 and it has a D in it. So I need a second equation. It's luckily you have um, the sum of the first four terms <laughs> is 46. Um, so I'm not using the 33, I'm using the 46 um, because it's talking about the four terms. So I'm going to have 46 is equal to 2 times 2t1 two two plus 3d. So 46 is equal to 4t1 plus 6d. So I have equation two and I have equation one. What am I going to do? Either eliminate or substitute. I think I'll redig this one so that it's equal to D. Um, so this I'm going to rearrange to uh, D is equal to 13 minus 2T1. Rearrange to a single variable. What if we need to do chapter eight? Turn this chapter eight down. So now what I'm going to do, because I have this equivalent statement, I'm going to go into here and replace D with this expression. So 46 is equal to 4 T1 plus 6 times, and I'm replacing the letter D with the 13 minus 2 T1. Uh, 46 is equal to 4 T1 plus 78 C. Great when I have the calculators over there. Okay, so now I can solve this for T1. Does that make sense, everybody? Like I can solve this because now I have a single variable in here and this is just written on map. So um, I'm going to have. Negative 34 equals a negative 8t1. So 4 equals, that's supposed to be a t1, everybody. Right? So I'm not sure how many of you would have felt comfortable going to the system, um, but it's usually useful to you. So it said it wanted the first six terms. Oh, you're right. Did I mess up my mouth here anywhere? It's 32. I don't know the answer is four, guys. The I am subtracting, I'm holding it up. Okay, so my mouth is a little shady. 
Um, so now, now we can use some just think and math. Are you going to say that's still up? Yeah? Yeah. 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 Thank you. I thought I heard no way. Okay, so we know that T1, which is we defined, we found T1 is 4. And we know that they have to add up to 13. So it's 9, right? What's the common difference? 5. Okay, so this is 4, this is 9, what's this one? 14? 19. Do 19 and 14 add up to 33? Okay, so we're just checking our math that we did it correctly, right? So the question asks for the determine the first six terms. So we've got 4, 9, 14, 19, 24, 29. And we do the first six terms, yeah? And then it asks for the term. I would not use the formula. <laughs> I would use my understanding calculator and I would just add them up. <laughs> like I wouldn't waste my time, right? I think the formula is really useful for finding what T1 was, but like don't waste your time showing me a formula on really easy stuff that you can figure out. Like, you know, like we all did, we did this part just like by reading it. What's the sum? The formula is easier to get this end of T and 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 T and